All right, this module is about air quality and pollution control. Our learning outcomes for this module are to describe the different types of air pollutants, their sources, the influence of geography and weather, and the impacts on environmental and human health, to apply the US EPA emission factor modeling approach to calculate air pollutant emissions from a facility, and to describe engineering approaches for controlling air pollution emissions and improving air quality. This video is on the second learning outcome to apply the US EPA emission factor modeling approach to calculate air pollution emissions. So the emission factor modeling approach essentially uses this equation for almost all types of air pollutants, right? So the emissions of those air pollutants can be estimated by multiplying the activity rate A by the emission factor EF. And if we have some type of engineering control that removes the air pollutants from the airstream, we would also multiply it by one minus nu, where nu is the emission control efficiency. So one would be complete control, meaning we have like 100% removal of the air pollutant before it gets into the atmosphere. And zero is where we have no control. So no treatment or any you know, removal of the pollutant before it gets released. So I kind of like to use the analogy of, um, you know, like your pay, a pay rate, having a job. So when you have a job, you, you work a certain number of hours and you get paid a particular rate for the amount of hours that you work. So the, um, the activity rate is kind of like the amount of hours that you work and the emission factor is sort of like how much you get paid. So some jobs pay more than others. And so if, you, if two people work the same amount of hours and one person gets paid more, then the total pay they would receive is greater. Of course, just like if there are two activity rates that are identical, but one facility has a higher emission factor, that facility is going to have higher emissions. Um, and and likewise, you know, if, if, um, if you have a lower emission factor, but you have a higher activity rate, meaning you, you know, kind of like with the analogy, you have a lower paying job, but you work more hours, you might still have higher pay or higher emissions. All right, so it's a, it's a fairly simple approach. Um, and it's described in this EPA manual, the report AP-42, which was published in 1995. Many of the chapters have been updated since then um, as new emission factors are published. So we're gonna go through a few examples. So in general, the emission factors are presented in a table very similar to the type of, to the table that you see over here on the right table 6.4-1, where you can see the uncontrolled emission factors for paint and varnish manufacturing. All right, so first of all, you see uh, the emission factor rating. So each of these tables is rated on a scale of A, B, uh, C, D, E. Um, the, the rating factor, so you know some of the ratings are higher than others. And uh, the higher rating means that the numbers that appear in the table are more accurate. And some of the, some of the numbers that they have in the table might be a rough estimate, but they're, they're less accurate. So whenever you're using this approach, you should pay attention to the emission factor rating. Then the next thing you see here is different types of products, or sometimes this is a different type of process used. And the, in this particular case, the different products have different emission factors, or in some other cases, the different type of process might have a different emission factor. So here you can see with paint, um, you've got two different types of emissions associated with the manufacturing of paint. You've got particulate emissions for particulate pollution, like particulate matter, and you've got non-methane VOC emissions. Whereas for some of the other products like varnish, you know, different types of varnishes, you've got on, mostly only VOC emissions. So you only see those numbers appear in the table. And you can see that the units of the emission factors are in kilograms per megagram or pounds per ton. 
So that's kilograms of pollutant, for example, kilograms of VOC per megagram of paint being manufactured or pounds of VOC emitted per ton of paint manufactured. And a lot of times these tables have um, notes at the, you know, footing notes at the bottom, A, B, C, D, as you can see here. Sometimes those refer to references where the information comes from, from some scientific study. Sometimes it refers to uh, a certain, um, you know, condition about the, the use of the emission factor. So it's important to pay attention to those footnotes because sometimes it, it might have some influence on how you calculate the emissions using this approach. So let's do an example problem. Here's an example of an industrial boiler um, that's burning 120,000 gallons of distillate oil per day producing less than 100 million BTUs per hour. Let's assume that there's no engineering or emission control devices used here. So we really don't have to worry about that emission control efficiency. So let's use the EPA emission vector modeling approach to estimate the emissions of carbon monoxide. And let's express it as pounds per day. All right, so if we go into table 1.3.1 of AP42, we can see the criteria pollutant emission factors for fuel oil combustion. So you can see here that the emission factors for carbon monoxide are dependent on the firing configuration. And there's different configurations for an industrial boiler. Uh, so it's important that we know what the firing configuration is. In this particular example, we can see that we're, we're burning distillate oil. Right, so we have distillate oil fired as the configuration, and that has, has an emission factor of five pounds per 10 to the third gallon. Now that wouldn't matter actually in, in this case for carbon monoxide, all of these different firing configurations have an emission factor of five, or, but that may not always be the case for other types of pollutants. All right, so we have an activity rate of 120,000 gallons per day. The emission factor is five pounds per thousand gallons. Our emission control efficiency is zero. So the emissions can be calculated by multiplying 120,000 gallons per day by five pounds per thousand gallon, which gives us a value of 600 pounds per day. So that would be the emissions, estimated emissions of carbon monoxide from this industrial boiler. Let's do another example. So let's assume we have a coal power plant, coal burning power, power plant that burns uh, but bituminous coal with uh, products has a 4% content of sulfur and a 6% content of ash that's delivered daily to a pulverized coal fired wet bottom power, tangentially fired power plant. So that's the conf configuration, the firing configuration for this particular plant. So what's the emission of SOX and filterable PM10 for a 100,000 kilogram per day coal combustion? So let's assume that this plant is burning 100,000 100, kilograms per day. And let's assume that we have an air scrubber installed at the smokestack that removes 95% of SOX and 80% of PM10. So let's express the answer in kilograms per day. All right, and if we look at table 1.1-3 of AP42, we can see that for the firing configuration that we have wet bottom tangentially fired, bituminous coal, we've got an emission factor in pounds per ton for SOX of 38 times S. Now, here's an example of a table where we need to really look at the footnotes because 38 S, what does the S mean? Well, if we look at footnote B from this table, this is expressed as SO2, including SO2, SO3, and gaseous sulfates 
The factors in parentheses should be used to estimate gaseous SOX emissions for subbituminous coal. In all cases, S is the weight percent sulfur content of the coal as fired. So the emission factor would be calculated by multiplying the weight percent sulfur in the coal by the numerical value preceding S. For example, if the fuel is 1.2% sulfur, then S is equal to 1.2. Right, so in our case, the emission factor is calculated by multiplying 38 times four because we have 4% sulfur. That's 152 pounds per ton. Right, if we convert that to kilograms per kilogram, it gives us, we can get a value of 0 0.076. So that's converting pounds to kilograms and then converting tons to kilograms. Our activity rate is 100,000 kilograms per day, which is why we have to convert it to kilograms per kilogram instead of pounds per ton. Right, so now we have a value of new for the scrubber is 95%, so it's 0 0.95. So our SOX emissions is calculated by multiplying 100,000 times 0 0.076 times one minus 0 0.95. And that's equal to 380 kilograms per day. And I didn't show the units here, which is bad practice. You should always show the units in your calculation. But if you cancel out the units, so kilograms of, kilograms of fuel cancels out with kilograms of fuel here. And we're left with kilograms of SOX emission per day. And that's why we get the units here, kilograms per day. So 380 kilograms per day. Why don't you pause the video here and try to do the same calculation for filterable PM10. So here's the table. You can see the emission factors are all shown here. So for wet bottom tangentially fired, we have a value of 2.3 times A and A is the weight percent ash content of coal as fired. And don't forget that we have an engineering control. We're assuming that the removal efficiency is 80% for PM10. All right, so pause the video here and calculate the total emissions of PM10. All right, hopefully you worked out the solution to that example problem. Let's see what you get. All right, so hopefully you got, um, you found that the wet bottom tangentially fired uh, emission factor is 2.6 times A, where A is the percent ash content of the coal. So our emission factor is 2.6 times six, which equals 15.6 pounds per ton. We need to convert that to kilograms per kilogram. So we convert the pounds to kilograms and we convert the tons to kilograms, we would get a value for the emission factor of 0 0.0078 kilograms per kilogram. The activity rate is 100,000 kilograms per day, and our removal rate is 80% from the scrubber. So our PM10 emissions can be calculated as 100,000 times 0 0.0078 times one minus 0 0.8 which gives us a value of 156 kilograms per day of PM10. All right, let's do one more example. So this one is an example of pesticide emissions. And let's assume that we have 3,629 kilograms of spectricide, which is a commercial product that's used to kill weeds in lawns. Let's assume that that's surface applied each year to lawns in a particular city. And if we look up on the container, we can see that the active ingredient of spectricide is diazinone at a percentage of 58. So the question is, what are the annual air emissions of diazinone under these conditions? And express the answer in kilograms per year. Um, that's a mistake, should say kilograms per year. All right, so we'll have to look at section 
of document AP42. And why don't you pause the video here, click on the link for section 9.2.2, which is provided in the Canvas page, and see if you can find the solution expressed in kilograms per year or kilograms per day. All right, so if you pause the video and work through the solution, hope, hopefully you were able to find the appropriate tables in section 9.2.2. Let's go through the solution now. All right, so the activity rate is calculated by multiplying the amount of spectricide, 3,629 kilograms, by the percent of the active ingredient. So we multiply 3,629 by 0 0.58, and that gives us an activity rate of 2,105 kilograms of diazinone per year. So if we look up table for emission factors for pesticide active ingredients, which is table 9.2.2-4, we can see that the emission factor is dependent on the vapor pressure range for surface application, right? So we have surface applied um, pesticide here. So we need to know what the vapor pressure range is for the active ingredient in our pesticide. So if we look up diazinone in table 9.2.2-1, we can see that the vapor pressure of that active ingredient is 6.0 times 10 to the negative fifth millimeters of mercury at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so if we go back to table 9.2.2-4 and we look up the vapor pressure range that corresponds with our active ingredient. So we're in between one times 10 to the fourth and one times 10 to the sixth. So we need to be using the emission factor of 350 kilograms per megagram which is equivalent to 700 pounds per ton. But since we're, our units are already in kilograms, uh, we can easily convert between kilograms and megagrams, right? So we're gonna use 350 kilograms per megagram, uh, which is equal to 0 0.35 kilograms per kilogram. We don't have any engineering controls here, emission controls, efficiency is equal to zero. So therefore we can calculate our emissions of diazinone by multiplying 2,105 kilograms per year by 0 0.35 kilograms per kilogram, which gives us a value of three, 737 kilograms per year, which if you calculated it um, per day, then you would get a value of approximately 2.0 kilograms per day. And that's how you apply the emission factor modeling approach.